you know, tough weekend. It always is when you've spent time with players and develop relationships with them. Um, it's always, you know, hard to say goodbye. And, but, you know, what makes this year a little bit different with the 16 man practice squad, being able to keep more guys, um, that's a good thing. But, you know, all in all, we're excited. Been a great training camp. Um, even under the circumstances, I'm proud of our, you know, our entire organization, um, the work that they put in um, to navigate all the new protocols and, you know, all the new things that we had to, um, you know, kind of juggle um, to get all this in place. Our coaches, our players, you know, our staff, um, just extremely proud of them um, for getting this pulled off. Um, and, you know, and, and had a very competitive, um, which helped us in the evaluation process, um, but excited, excited about where we're going, excited about our roster and ready to get started. Right. Questions on fire away. Go ahead, Mike Chappell. Hey, Mike. Chris, how you doing? Uh, you said, you said from the first day on the job, it'll never be about one guy meeting the quarterback. Why do you think this roster now is at the point that it won't be about one guy, in this case, Philip Rivers? Um, I mean, I, I mean, look, I don't ever want to take away from the quarterback position the importance of it. Um, I think because we all know um, the importance of that position and, you know, the value that it brings to a team. But saying that, you've got to have a team around them that can carry them. The quarterback – so he doesn't have to play lights out each and every week for you to win. There's got to be different ways to win, whether, you know, one week you might win on defense. The next week, you know, you might win running the ball. Uh, you might win on special teams one week. So it's got to be about, you know, every player on the roster, every phase. Um, and we feel like we're in a good spot, you know, right now. We feel like we've, we've got a good young defensive football team with a good mix, mix of veterans. Um, and we feel the same way on, on offense. Um, and really on special teams, too, with the, with the ascension of, of Naheem Hines giving us a, you know, at the end of last year, an explosive returner um, that's a threat to score, you know, every time you punt to him. Um, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful thing um, on game day to have. So, you know, we feel good about where we're at. Zach Kiefer. Hey, Zach. Hey, Chris. Um... You know this, but uh, zero defensive starters from the time you took over that are still on the team. I don't even know if there's any reserves left, to be honest. Um, we know how much you love the defensive side of the ball. What gives you confidence about that group? Because they need to get better from where they were in December last time we saw them. Yeah. And, and what gives you concern about that group heading into? I'll never forget, you know, when, I, when we first got here, um, saying we knew that, there's going to be a ton of work that needed to be done on the defensive side. Um, and I'm proud of the work um, our staff's put in, our coaching staff and developing these young players. Um, we're not perfect, but we, we feel like we've got a good set of at each, at every level, you know, we're, that's what you want. You want disruptive players and good players at every level. And, and we think we've, we've done that. And now we've started to, to build some depth, you know, I'm always going to say it always starts up front. Um, and with the addition of Buckner, um, but not only, you know, the three technique will make it go um, in this defense. It's kind of the engine that drives the train. But saying that, you know, when, you, when you've got a Justin Houston, when you've got Danico Autry, when you've got uh, Grover Stewart, when you've got Muhammad, who's really coming on, really proud of, of Lewis and the way he's performed and matured and, uh, you know, really giving us a lot of flexibility inside. I'm expecting big things from him. Um, and then Banigou, um, you know, we're excited about the, the front and they'll all play and they'll all rotate in. Um, and then the linebacker group speaks for itself. I think y'all think y'all, I think you know my opinion on our linebackers. We kept seven because we have seven good players. Um, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way, but we have seven really good football players and they all fill a specific role. Um, so we wanted to make sure we kept them. And then, you know, the changes we made in the back end, um, and they weren't easy, but we think they're going to be for the good. You know, Rocky Sins had a great camp. 
competitive, everything I've, everything we thought um, about him, he's just ascending. And I think he's just going to continue to ascend because he's so daggum mentally tough. You know, all he does is get out and he works. He doesn't say a word. He just works. He competes and he works. And I think that's contagious on the group. I mean, you know my thoughts on Kenny Moore. I think Kenny Moore is one of the top nickels in the league, and he's very valuable to this football team. But then the ad addition of Xavier Rhodes, uh, the veterans carry, um, along with Isaiah Rogers, we think we've upgraded the corner position. Um, and then to watch our safeties improve, you know, Malik Hooker's had his best camp. Um, he's been an absolute pro um, here during training camp. And it's been, it's fun to watch. I mean, sometimes we forget that these are young kids. You know, I know and I've said this a few times, but you know, you want guys to walk in the building and be ready-made pros, but sometimes it just takes time. I mean, they're young kids when you draft them and they've got to mature. So hooks, hooks, we're expecting a good year out of hooker. Um, and you know, then with Corey, who we think a lot of, and we think he's had a great camp um, and you know, the additions that we've made in terms of uh, Tavon Wilson, a veteran, giving us a veteran, and then George Odom, who all he does is every time he gets in a game, he makes something happen. Um, then we're excited to see Julian Blackman when he's ready. Um, uh, we think he's pretty talented, um, and we think he's really going to help the group. Joel Erickson. Chris, uh, how did you hear about Noah Tongiai? And uh, did, does Frank still have cameras or something he left in the Eagles practice facility? Or how did you <laughs> So, look, we – our our pro scouting staff, all these college guys are, you know, college and pro scouts, they do an incredible job. I mean, I think our history shows that, um, you know, from Kenny Moore to Muhammad to Desir to Glowinski, I mean, you're talking about full-time players that were all claimed. I, I, I tell you all every year that the draft is just one part of the player acquisition process. Um, and we always feel like you, you know, that if we got a chance to get better and find a player we think can help us, we're going to take a shot at it. And look, we're not always right. We're not always perfect. No, no team is. Um, but when we started studying, you know, when Burton went down with the calf injury, um, we just started studying these tight ends. And look, with no preseason games, it makes it even, it makes it even harder. But we reevaluated the, you know, a lot of the draft picks. You know, we went back and. Our scouts went back through college tape and identified Noah as a guy that, you know, we think can help us. Without preseason tape, you're not 100% sure, um, but we sure liked what we saw on college tape and in the workout. So we'll get him in the fold and see how he does. We're, I know this. We're excited to get Noah. George Bremer for Coach Reich. So to kind of piggyback on Joel's question, is there an advantage for Noah having come through that Philadelphia system similar enough that it, it give him a little bit of a head start? And do you think he can contribute right away? Yeah, I think there, there is an advantage coming from the system. The system system's obviously very similar. And so that should make for a seamless transition. And like Chris said, I'm just excited. Um, had no idea about Noah. Uh, you know, funny to think, you know, the connections there, but but no idea that was that was Chris and the scouts finding this guy. So we'll see we'll see what he does. I think mentally though, it should be made a lot easier by coming from a similar system. Stephen Holder, just a, a general question that's kind of been touched on already. For I guess for Chris, um, you didn't have preseason this year, and I'm wondering with your own team, just how did that change your evaluation at cut time? Um, I know you feel confident in your in your choices, but I mean, is there any hesitation when you don't see him under the lights at all? Um, well, of course. I mean, it's, you know, you never know how a guy's going to react, especially a rookie. But, I mean, look, I mean, what, in 18, we played how many rookies? You just, I mean, and even though it's preseason, it's still preseason. I mean, I thought the two scrimmages, we got after it in those two scrimmages. Our staff did a tremendous job. Um, scripting it, scripting it, and the intensity in them was outstanding. Now, there wasn't as much full speed tackling, but I'm going to tell you what happens in the preseason is you get to these, you get to the third and fourth quarter, and you know you're really playing and trying to see these backups. But what happens is they get exhausted because they're playing on every special team, 
And I, I don't even know if you're ever getting really a true look then because they're gassed from going so much. So being able to control the tempo of these scrimmages um, really gave us a chance to really get some good evaluation. And, and look, Frank did a, a great job making sure that we got enough opportunities in practice to see some competitive, hard, um, you know, physical periods to where we could really evaluate it. Greg Doyle. Hey, uh, this is for Chris, but I would love, Frank, if you would chime in after Chris is done, please. Um, it, it's a kicker. I assume that Rodrigo had to beat out Chase. I mean, I, you know, the incumbent was Chase. Anyway, just tell me, why, why Rodrigo? That's good. Um, so, I mean, look, it was, it was close. I mean, you're talking, you're splitting hairs between, you know, between two pretty good players. And, you know, the first, the first four or five days before y'all even got out there, Rod didn't even miss. Um, and then he kind of went through a little rough patch. But then on the second scrimmage, you know, I thought he looked really fluid and comfortable. Um, and at the end of the day, it was a tough choice. And we just, we just decided to go with Rod. Um, you know, we, I just think, and our staff, we all think that he's just got something to him. Um, we like Chase. Chase is going to kick in the league. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we were splitting hairs between the two guys. You know, we had done a lot of work in the pre-draft process with Rod. We thought we saw what we needed to see here um, and ended up making a choice of Rod. Yeah, I would just echo the same thing. That was, they're all tough decisions. That might've been the toughest one and the toughest conversation. Uh, right, Greg, given that you said, like what you said, he was the incumbent. He performed well last year. Um, as hard as those discussions were, you know, looking, not just at, you know, looking at numbers, but just looking at and feeling the whole, the overall thing, you know, with, with the handful of us that were in the discussion on this, really trying to sort it through, um, that was just the general sentiment. And I think it was very difficult. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to, we have to project, you know, who's going to be the best kicker for us this year, who's going to produce the best. And I agree with Chris, uh, we felt going in that both these guys were going to end up in the league, feel like they both were going to be good kickers for a lot of years. So it was a tough choice, but um, we're, we're excited to have Rod as our kicker. Jim Aiello. Yeah, Chris, I just uh, wanted to ask you about the offensive line. you got seven guys on the active roster right now. I'm sure that you may maybe not be done tinkering with that right now, but what do you think of the depth that you have behind, obviously, a great starting five? feel good about it. Um, really do. Um, the Raven Clark – it's, it's, uh, has had a really good training camp, probably his best since I've been here. Um, and, you know, Chris Strouser has done a tremendous job um, working with him. Um, and, you know, Danny Penner, I think you know our feelings when we drafted Danny, um, but we thought Danny had a chance to really do some, some cool things here, you know, for us. And he's accelerating. And we're playing in Danny in, in, a, in a bunch of different positions. You know, procedurally today we had to move Green off the roster, but Green Green will come back on the roster. You know, I'll just go ahead and fill you in. I mean, we're going to go ahead and put Day on IR, um, and then we'll move Green back up. So we'll be back at eight. And look, the practice squad is different this year. Um, it, you can move guys up and down. Um, there's a limit of what you can do. Um, but these guys are – there's no different – in my mind, these guys, and we've always probably had this mentality, but even more so this year, these guys are, they're getting ready to play because you just don't know. And we feel really good about, you know, what we have on the practice squad also. And I think you'll see the number increase some weeks, um, you know, and be over the eight count as we go along. But, you know, just right now, we felt good about that and we feel about, good about the guys we got on the practice squad. Mike Wells. Hey Chris, how you doing? Um, well, hey Wells, you, hey, you're running. Yeah. You're a politician now. I want to make sure. <laughs> I just found this out today. Okay, man. Good luck running. Good hey, luck. I, I, I appreciate. It. I like the education system. So, hey, but I, I want to ask you. Um, there's so much praise about your 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 entire linebacker core, but what about your your starting linebackers? What is it about them that um? has you guys believe and you have one of the top units in the NFL? Well, I mean, look, I mean, 
Darius is, speaks for Darius. I mean, <laughs> I was looking up stats the other day, and, you know, Darius is matching things statistically that only a few guys have ever done. Um, and we've and look, Anthony Walker, all Anthony Walker does is go to work and produce. Um, he's athletic, he's fast. Um, he, he can play every spot on the defense. And it, he's played at a high level. And then Bobby Okariki is just continually putting pressure because I think we saw what he can do when he plays. So from a, you know, from a three starter standpoint, you know, I'd match him up with anybody in the league. And then you, and then we're fortunate, you know, because we have a good backup crew with Zaire Franklin, you know, and Matt Adams, EJ Speed and, and Glasgow. And they all play a certain, you know, certain role. Um, but in terms of those top three, those are, those are three really talented producers, um, you know, for our defense. Jake Arthur for Coach Reich. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Uh, so the wide receiver battle is, is always one of the most discussed ones in the last few training camps. Um, Desmond Patman obviously did enough to make the roster. Uh, early on when, when he was picked, one of the things was, you know, he's a big, fast guy, but maybe doesn't know yet how to play to his size and strength. Have you guys seen that development from him already? Yeah, we really have. And um, the other thing we've seen is is a toughness to him, you know, with the intensity of our camp and the number of reps. And you know, we had a few guys down and this guy never, never missed anything. Um, he could he was going all day. You know, ideally, you want to bring a, a young receiver in and play him in only one position. But he had to move around a little bit, showed an aptitude to pick things up. But I think, I think probably what impressed us most of all was uh, the consistency of, of what he did in camp. That, you know, he flashed early and it was like, okay, that's normal. You got a big, strong guy who's fast and good kid. And he flashed, and, but then he kept flashing. And it, there was a consistency to his play that is why he's on the roster. And then secondly, um, you know, it's no secret in this league that you got to be able to beat press coverage. And, and so we really place a high premium on guys who show in training camp that they have an ability to, to be, have aggressive releases and to be able to beat man coverage, press man coverage. And, and he consistently showed that. And so the mental side of the game, he's done a good job with, and I think he'll continue to develop there. But, uh, you know, we're excited to have him. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Wish TV is next also for Coach Reich. Coach, I, I doubt you've had much of a chance to think about this this weekend, but I wanted to get your opinion now that there's a clear picture on, on the status of fans and, and kind of your game day procedure moving forward, um, how you guys plan to approach that in the coming weeks now that it is game day. Yeah, you know, we got obviously got the word about the 2,500 fans, um, you know, for when we're back here. But I think our focus as a team is, you know, we know that there's a new normal and that it could be slightly different from team to team. So we've just decided we decided early on that we weren't going to let that be a distraction to us, that we were going to focus on what we do. We know the NFL is going to pipe noise in. And, you know, I think that'll be good. That kind of neutralizes everything that the noise kind of takes away from the fact that there's fewer people in the stands, to be honest. That was my experience anyway um, when we were in Lucas Oil uh, for our practices, that when they're piping in the noise, sure, you feel like there's not the crowd there, but it does do something. So we're just going to more focus on getting ready to, you know, each week to play the difficult opponents that we play, whether it's home or on the road, and, uh, and not, let, not let the fan, number of fans be a distraction to us. Mike Chappell. Yeah, Frank, I'm curious, how do you balance knowing the importance of the opener yet yet not putting, I don't know, must win type of thing? And it got you, it's been, you know, you guys have lost seven straight on the road. Yeah, in, no. opener, in openers. How do Thank you, you. Thank you, Chap. I, we appreciate, I, we appreciate I, that. I'm a, I'm a fountain of information. <laughs> but, but, I mean, again, how do you balance the importance but not over overloading it? No, no, it's important. And um, yeah, and I did see, I don't know which one of you guys are, I saw someone put that out there today that, you know, we hadn't won an opener since 2013. So um, we need to do everything we can do to get that turned around this year. And obviously, 
chap. And, and as you guys know, this one's even more important because it's a division opponent and it's on the road. So a win against a division opponent on the road against a team that we haven't played well down in their stadium. Um, you know, we have a lot to prove and we know this is a good football team and, uh, and, and they've done a good job against us. So I think we'll go down there focused. Um, I also know it's important because every year, you know, just talking to Mr. Ursay, um, you know, he, he stresses to me the importance of the opener. So, um, you know, we're going to give him, we'll give him our best effort and uh, we'll give, we'll give Jacksonville our best effort. We'll be focused and, and get ready. We want to start, start the year off right, right with a, a win on, on the road against a division opponent, a good team. One, one more and then I'll shut up. Uh, Trey Burton not going on IR apparently. Well, I'll get, I'll answer that one. We're still working through it, chap. Okay. Um, I can't say yay or nay yet. Um, we'll know more in the next couple of days. Uh, we're just kind of monitoring, seeing where he's at and seeing where the best, you know, what the best course of action is here. You know, whether it's going to be two or three weeks, we're just, we're working through it. Okay, thank you. Joel Erickson for Chris. Chris, uh, you, you kept Clark and Green, the two, the two guys that were playing a lot of tackle. Is that in any way related to Costanzo's oblique? No, we'll always, um, no, not at all. Um, I learned this from Coach Reed, you know, you can never have enough tackles, you know, because they can, you know, they can flex and play a couple different spots for you and get in and play guard. Um, they're athletic. They're used to playing on an island. So, no, that, that's a position we'll usually go a little heavier. Jake Arthur for Chris. I was actually good. My, my question got answered okay. already. Thank you. Uh, George George Bremer for Chris. Morning. Uh, you look at the, the draft picks, I think eight of the nine draft picks make this roster. Obviously a shortened uh, offseason in, in really tough time for rookies. What does it say about this class that they were able to, to have such good camps and, and earn these spots? Um, I mean, look, I mean, you know, we got a long way to go. Um, you know, they're good players. I mean, we – we drafted them for a reason to be here. Um, they know they got to perform. Um, and, you know, they did a good job performing. Um, but still, they got a – it's a long – we got a long way to go. Um, you know, just making the initial roster. Um, now you now you got to continue – you know, the intensity level is going to pick up here this week even more. You know, your first game week, you know, they, they've got to pick up and be able to handle the speed of it. And I think they will. It's a good group. This is a really good group, um, very mature, um, really talented, um, and they've, you know, they've had to, they've had to overcome some obstacles here to get to this point. Okay, we'll go three more. Uh, Jim Ayala. Chris, I wanted to ask about uh, Jacob and, and and keeping three quarterbacks. Just thought, I didn't know if that had anything to do with with COVID. I know he's obviously a high or higher draft pick, so you probably want to keep him around. But I just Curious about what the procedure was for that. And then what you thought of Jacob. Obviously, when you guys drafted him, you said, let's not, let's not go crazy. He's competing for the third quarterback spot. Well, that's where he's at right now. Um, and, you know, we kept, you know, Chad's back. Chad had a good camp, too. Um, Chad's back on the practice squad. So, you know, we feel good about where we're at with the position. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll do some things, you know, each week to make sure we have a quarterback protected just in case – you know, things, you know, get scary on you on the weekend. Um, but look, Jake, Jake, he's done a good job. Everything, everything Jacob, we've asked him to do, he has done, and he's done it a lot. He's very talented. I think you all saw it um, in the scrimmage, some of the throws he made. Jake, he's very talented. Um, but he's got to grow. He's a young player, and he's got to learn. He's got to grow. He's got to earn his way. Um, and, you know, at this point, he's doing it. All right, looks like this will be the last one. Stephen Holder. Uh, Chris, um, I don't know if I'm phrased this the right way, but when you have positions, like you talked about linebacker, keeping seven linebackers, that's, that seems like a lot, but you love those guys, and I get it. Um, how do you weigh that, a situation like that, versus a position where, like, I think like corner, I think you got five, maybe teams tend to go a little high on corner, right, because of injury? Yeah. Um, yep. How do you weigh stuff like that, and like, one position affects another one, right? So. Yeah, good question. Um, we feel good about some guys we have not only on the active, but also on the practice squad, you know, then you weigh in, you know, a little bit of, you know, who you think could, if they hit the street, are they, you know, are they going to get claimed? 
Um, and that weighs into it also. But look, all these guys, you know, everybody on that, in that linebacker room, and we'll see what the active looks like, you know, each and every week. But at some point, they're all gonna, they're all gonna have a role defensively. All right, you guys all good? Chris, uh, what's the worry with uh, Toure? What's going ah, on with good him? question. No, that's good. That's a good, I'm glad you asked that so you don't have to guess. Um, all right, so look, the, you know, the surgery he had was, 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 it was a major surgery. COVID did not help this. Um, and look, Toure's done everything we've asked. He's just, at the end of the day, he's not ready. Um, and we're not going to put a guy out there that's not ready. So we're going we're gonna to shoot for six weeks from now uh, to try to get him back. He's still having some pain in that ankle. Um, he's rehabbing his butt off and working his butt off. Trainers are doing a, a really good job with him. Um, but, you know, he's just, he's just not there yet. And so we're not going to put him out there, um, you know, when he's not ready to go. God, I'm glad, have- this, is not, I'm glad this is not Andrew. I feel, I feel like I'm talking about Andrew. We haven't even gone there yet. <laughs> now, Toure had the surgery last year, right? It would have been in the fall after the he injury? He had it in – he had it when, – when did we play? So mid-October? Yeah. Right. No, and it's been a long – it's been a hard – but look, this was a – I mean, that was a bad ankle. I mean, it was a bad break. Um, so it was a – it was a tough – it was a tough uh, deal to overcome. And then you – then you get where it was really hard to rehab in the month of March and April just because and it's not the kid did everything he's supposed to do um but it was hard for anybody to really connect and get it done so i mean no excuse at the end of the day um but the kid did everything he was supposed to do he's just he's not ready yet i think he'll get there um i do i think he'll get there and i think in six weeks we'll be you know having another discussion of when to you know get him back but you know to activate him right now he hadn't practiced all camp he's not quite you know, ready. So I figured let's just keep him on PUP. Um, let's give him some more rehab time. Let him continue to to get the ankle where he, where him and the doctors think it's it's good to go, and then we'll move forward. 